What's up, Workforce? Brian here, and in the theme of cloud streaming, Friday, apparently, uh, with a second video, it looks like Square Enix is fully embracing the cloud and developing cloud-only or cloud-native video games. Now, they don't make any announcements here, but I want to kind of go over in a deep dive about this letter that from the president of Square Enix uh, talking to his company and a New Year's letter from the president. If you haven't seen this, I'll include a link in the description below if you guys are interested in reading it for yourselves. But let's just go ahead and dive in. I'm going to provide my thoughts as usual along the way. And as always, I'd love to know what you're thinking in the comments below. So it begins. I would like to wish everyone a happy new year. In 2019, the digital entertainment industry saw an announcement of next generation consoles like Sony's PlayStation 5 and Microsoft's Series X. Cloud streaming services also came into their own with the introduction of Google Stadia, NVIDIA GeForce Now, and the announcement that Microsoft will launch its X Cloud platform this year. With the arrival of these new platforms comes the potential for major change in the nature and content platforms and competition between providers. Further, as smartphones have begun to offer less in the way of new functionality and grown more mature as gaming devices, expectations have begun to mount at the arrival of new AR glasses. So as far as a new era of gaming experience is concerned, while Japan's mobile gaming market continues to expand, its growth has slowed. Best-selling gaming app sales remain largely unchanged, but it was also a year that clearly illustrated the principle of survival of the fittest as titles offering new experiences were able to make significant market share gains. More so than ever before, people are looking for something else, something original and innovative. The companies that are able to make that reality will survive in this new era. The HD game space is also poised for change as this new era brings in the advent of cloud gaming and the likelihood that games themselves will become more service-based. The very nature of gaming experiences is likely to undergo rapid change as gameplay becomes less about a one-way street and will begin to have more interactions with other players and viewers. Now, cloud streaming is going to be coming into its own with the advent of 5G on the horizon. Against this backdrop of change, we are not only making steady progress on developing next-generation console titles, but have also actively readied ourselves to support cloud gaming, which we expect to take off with the advent of 5G. The arrival of the streaming as a new distribution platform will not only further accelerate the transition from the traditional disc-based sales model to digital sales, but it could also drive significant change in the business models themselves via the adoption of subscription models, for example. We are especially hopeful about the major potential cloud streaming services possess and to expand markets in growing regions such as India and South America, where there are not only been a significant adoption of traditional home consoles as telecommunication infrastructure improves, cloud streaming will directly provide customers in such markets with playing environments that eliminate the need for traditional consoles of PCs. From a game development perspective as well, we will strive to create gaming experiences only possible in the cloud, meaning developing cloud-native and cloud-centric games. For cloud streaming to enjoy mass adoption, there will need to be innovative not only in terms of distribution, but also in terming of games experiences. We believe that new gaming experiences that would have only been impossible on a traditional game console will be a major driver in cloud gaming adoption. Our efforts to develop cloud-native and cloud-centric titles are already underway, and we will strive to create new gaming experiences. We naturally face a mountain of challenges, including technological hurdles that must be overcome and issues with telecommunication costs. However, we have no doubt that cloud gaming will represent a major trend over the next five years as we enter the age of 5G and that our strategy for flexibility responding to that trend will be key. We intend to stay on top of new developments and leverage cloud gaming to drive new growth. Now, given the advances in the Internet of Things domain, we plan to invest aggressively in the creation of new forms of entertainment that leverages the diverse portfolio of technologies that we've built up through our game development efforts. In the case of AI in particular, we are undertaking a wide range of incentives that go beyond gaming as we strive to create broader forms of entertainment AI. In addition, as the world looks forward to the arrival of new devices like AR glasses, we are continuing our R&D efforts into technologies such as XR. We believe that we'll be able to start unveiling the achievements of such efforts in some projects as early as this year. Meanwhile, games using blockchain are no longer in their infancy and are gradually coming to represent more significant presence. Rather than treating blockchain gaming as an opportunity for speculative investment, we believe establishing whether it is capable of bringing something new to our customers' gaming experiences will be the key to growth. 
2020 will be a year of major changes in the digital entertainment industry, and we stand on the cusp of a new era. We intend to view these changes as opportunities to take on a variety of new challenges. So please look forward to what we achieve, and I thank you for your continuing to support in the new year. So it's obviously with all of that, that now we have to look at what could they possibly be talking about with cloud-centric or cloud-native games. And honestly, I think the first and major adoption of that kind of technology is in the MMORPG space. But, you know, obviously there's going to be some concerns, and and, I, and rightfully so. I think a lot of people are, are concerned with, like, ownership. I think they're concerned about cloud as a platform for what it means for, like, hey, I want to own my game. I want to own my, my console. I want it physically there and present. And we've talked about this, uh, you know, a couple times, and I think that essentially the... The initial fear, I mean, the long-term fear makes sense, but the initial fear is that, the, you know, local machines, local PCs, those aren't going away anytime soon. There's still going to be a market for it. But what I've, what I come to understand and what I've come to believe about how cloud gaming is going to impact us all positively, especially as it relates to Square Enix, ends up being primarily that it's going to raise the tide for everything. So let's say you have a $5,000 gaming PC. It is specced out to the max, or you have the, the highest end, you know, console that money can buy. Um, and I don't, uh, maybe I have like a $500, you know, PC or, or, you know, like a cheap console, an old console. Well, what, what cloud gaming is, is that from a cost perspective, like if you look and the only thing we have to really go off of right now is X cloud and Stadia as primary two of the, the, the systems in place, or that are at least getting developed both in this case, uh, you end up having it to where if that's a free service or something that's very cheap to get into, uh, you can end up charging more for your console. You can end up saying to developers, everybody's going to be on a $5,000 gaming machine. They're all going to be able to, you know, process all this information. You don't have to design for scale so that you don't end up, you know, like if you were going to create a game and only five people could buy it versus if you could create a game and 5 million people could, could purchase it, uh, you're going to try to hit that, that largest number and that margin. So Square Enix's backing of cloud gaming here, I think it's not just telling, but it's important because especially for me, <laughs> It's all about me in this case, especially for me as a, as a major uh, fan, somebody who really enjoys Square Enix's IP and properties. As to what they're going to announce, as to what they're talking about with blockchain, as to uh, VR and XR and AR, uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what they do going forward. And that in and of itself is probably the most interesting takeaway from all of this. I think when you look at like Final Fantasy 14, for example, having that run in the cloud, having that streamed to somebody's device, uh, you could end up having and you could really excel both the visual quality and more uh, gone are the concepts of PlayStation limitations or console limitations uh, You know, you could send it to the switch You could do so many things with it because all the game is actually being processed on the server and it's just being streamlined to you uh, Obviously as uh, as consumers and as fans and uh, as people who enjoy video games uh, It's gonna be important that we always fight for our, our rights that we don't end up seeing this becoming a way in which that you know uh, we're, we're constantly penalized. But I also, the other big cool takeaway was how mobile games uh, is, is slowing down. And I think that's, uh, they've kind of reached maybe their limit and cloud gaming also for mobile would end up being a better system. And hopefully, and my hope personally rooted in all this is that when you look at microtransactions and all the different ways that games have come to monetize, a lot of that's being based off of the mobile market. And if the, I guess the more enthusiastic, the more like real meaty games could push back and give players on a phone or whatnot a, an experience worth purchasing, maybe we could see some of uh, the market itself uh, correct, some of the model itself correct. I don't know, this is all pie in the sky theories. We're gonna be along for the adventure one way or the other. But I just thought this was interesting. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video and this information. What kind of stuff would you wanna see Square Enix make? Like. What kind of games do you want? We know that Yoshi P has been working on the 2016 project uh, as to whatever that is. I don't I don't know. Whenever that is, we don't know. We're going to keep uh, keep you all up to date as we obviously learn more and as more information becomes available. Personally, I'm just really excited about it. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be an interesting year in 2020 and going forward. It's, it's a, it is a, a time of change and change can be scary and change could also suck. You know, like there's no guarantee that we're going to come out on the other end of this and be like, well, that was good. Um, it could just equally go as bad. But as the optimist here on the channel, uh, I, I have a, a feeling of hope and excitement, especially with a company that I spend lots of time and, and money on uh, every year <laughs> uh, saying this. Like, this is just, it's not surprising. They've been on this page for a while, but I think this was a really interesting letter. And yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think. 
I love you very much, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. For me. Boop. Thank you. You good? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>